Hello, Somatic Yoga family. I'm here with Milo taking his afternoon nap and Mr. Bones, and we want to teach you how to fire your gluteal muscles today. So those are part of them are the ones that I'm sitting on right now. Maybe you are too. And if not, please grab yourself a chair and also a blanket and maybe a strap. And the strap is actually going to go under your feet. So just something flat, like a row belt would work as well, or even a towel. But um, I get excited. This is a request from one of my students. And the reason I'm excited is because it was a specific request to do a practice to get the gluteal muscles firing before she goes for a walk. And any time that we can think of using muscles functionally, particularly when they're doing something that brings us joy, I get really excited. So that's what this practice is about letting you and find joy in your body. So just Mr. Bone just wants to show you a little bit of what the gluteal muscles look like. Remember, this is about the image of anatomy. So if you can imagine where they are when we're trying to turn them on and release them, it will be helpful to you. So we're starting with the gluteal maximus, which is the one I'm sitting on right now. And it attaches to right here, this is your, your hip bone. It attaches to the hip bone to your sacrum right here, that the, the fused vertebrae down there, that's really important because that can often cause pain in the sacral area if they're too tight. And then also it attaches to your tailbone down here. So we'd call that the origin. The insertion, very interestingly, is where it goes down here. It goes into what we call your IT band. So if you have IT band pain, that can also be part of the co contributor can be that gluteal max. And then additionally, it attaches to the back, whoops, do a little dance for me, of the femur bone right here. So that big, strong femur bone. Now the glute gluteus medius, and I like to call them M and M. These are, that's the big guy. These are the little glutes. Medius and minimus also on the back of that hip bone, let's say the posterior side of the hip bone, but those both attach into your greater trochanter, that big bone and the outer of the hip. So again, we're not doing an anatomy lab. I'm not testing you on it. But when you're thinking, what am I feeling today? Can you imagine where these muscles hold space in your body? And the gluteus maximus sits on top of the minimus, minimus and medius. Okay? So keep that picture in your mind as we get started. With the magic of pictures, Mr. Bone's been removed, and we're going to do the most functional movement for the glutes that I can think of, which is you're going to grab a strap, a rope belt will do, put it on the ground, and find a seat, find a chair. The lower the chair, the harder you're going to have to work. And I want you to bring that strap to where it's going to end up underneath your heels, and your heels are right underneath your knees. So that's how I want you to line it up, an L shape of your legs. And begin by just pushing into your heels. Don't even try to stand up, but push into your heels like you're going to stand up, but don't do it. And see if you feel anything. So this is to test out the gluteus max. See if you feel anything. So here's the way that I keep my glutes firing all day long. Every time you stand up from a chair, take a breath in. On your breath out, you can draw your navel center in, transverse abdominis. If you know how to work with your pelvic floor, draw your pelvic floor in, and then push into your heels and slowly lift, really slow. So it's not momentum. And see, once you get up there, can you feel those gluteal muscles? They should be, it should feel like your panty line is, is lifting up, yeah? <laughs> and then slowly sit down. We're gonna do that two more times. So the key here is pushing into your heels. That's helping to activate those gluteal muscles, but also do it on an exhalation. You might even tilt your pelvis back, draw your navel center and pelvic floor in, push into your heels, exhale, slowly come up. See if you can feel it back there and come back down. So this is like doing squats. If you're feeling really fit, you can come all the way down and do it in a squat. That's the other way to do it. But the other thing to play with is the distance between your feet. The closer your feet are together towards one another, the more work you're going to have. So maybe try bringing your feet. Or if you were struggling, take your feet wider. And then you can also cheat the first when you're first learning. Use your hands on your thighs to push. That's typically what we do, right? But really use that inhale. 
lengthen your spine, exhale, draw in, push into your heels, slowly, slowly rise up. Last one, come down. And then coming down, you're gonna feel your quadriceps, which is a fantastic bonus. Last one, take your inhale up. Exhale, draw in through the navel center, pelvic floor, push into the heels. See if you can get those glutes to fire. Slowly coming up. So that's something you can be doing all the time. Done playing with chairs, remove your chairs, and we're gonna come on to our left side. You may want to have a little pillow or something underneath your head. I've got a blanket, try that out. And we're gonna come and lay on our left side, make sure it's comfy for the upper body. And we're gonna play a little bit with finding out what these muscles do. So stack your right leg on top of your left, let yourself land on that, on that left side. So let your left side hold you. Take a few breaths there. And then take your right leg out long. Take the heel to the height of the hip. You can even look. Turn your toes straight forward for a moment. Keep the leg just like that. And begin to slowly take it back. And as you take it back, do your best not to arch your back, which will mean your belly will come forward. So you might even place a hand on the belly. Take the leg back from the hip crease. Keep the low back long and see what you're feeling. You can even touch that right butt cheek. Does it engage? And then come back, just let it fall down. So this is the glute max and it takes us into hip extension. It's a main function is the hip extension. It can also help with what we call external rotation. So next time, take the foot to the height of the hip, turn your toes upward a little bit and take it back. Just turn the toes up so thigh bone rotating out. Take it back, feel the muscles engage, and then a slow release all the way down. So play with that with toes forward, toes out, and feeling those buns of steel, <laughs> holding it for a few breaths, and then letting it come down. And then once you know that they're turning on for you, you can take any of those positions where you feel them and just keep it up there and slowly and slightly pulsate the leg. You might even turn your toes up and down. Just pulsate it with the leg back so the hip is in extension. Keeping that low back long, draw your navel center in. What do you feel in your, your big glute? And then let it fall down, relax. One of the things I like to do between all of these is to do, I say stir the hip, take the hip around in circles. That might feel good, just circle it around. Now let's explore the glute medius and minimus. And we can do, do those two together because they basically have the same function. So lift your foot up again. And remember they attach to about the same places too. Now I want you to internally rotate your thigh. So turn your toes down towards the ground and then start to start to just pulsate that leg a little bit and see if you feel it a little more on the outer hip here. So that's that medius and minimus, the little glutes. And I like to play with taking, so usually it takes our leg, it's a little bit of an internal rotator, but more so it takes it away from the center line of the body. So we say abduction. So the higher you go, make sure it's on first when you're low, but the higher you go, you're gonna feel it more. And you can turn the toes slightly forward, inward, see where you really get into that outer hip and just let it pulsate. Might be a little fatigue there. Can you still smile? Are you still breathing? But visualize, you can visualize the, the back of the hip bone where it was attaching and coming into that greater trochanter, both the little glutes coming right in there. And you might feel it at the greater trochanter. You might feel it up by the hip. And then let it come down, let it relax. That was a nice little exhaustion. Let's do that one more time. So you can internally rotate, lift it up, start low and slow, just little pulsations, and maybe lift it a little bit higher. The further you go from the floor, the more work it's gonna be because you're taking the hip into abduction. Play with the movement circles up and down, maybe even a little back and forth because that again is functional. 
that outer hip burner and let it come down. Let it completely relax. Do your circles if you'd like. So while we're on our side, we're gonna do another one that is for the little glutes. So now I want you to stack your knees and bring your thighs 90 degrees from your spine and your shin bones parallel to your spine or to the long edge of the mat. So bring those knees up, feel that outer hip. You can use your hand as a feeler for your nervous system. Press your big toes together and on an inhalation, lift the top knee up. And you'll see you don't have to go very far. As you breathe out, let it come back down. So you're gonna inhale, push the toes together, lift. Exhale, come back down. Sometimes I call this one clamshell. Are you feeling it in that outer hip? And it may have helped that we did the first, first movement to wake them up. And these are buggers. They often, um, buggers meaning they're not turning on, they're not doing their work. So one of the things I like to do with this one too is take it into that position, make sure they're working. Watch your pelvis isn't rolling forward. So keep the right hip stacked on top of the left and do that little pulsation again. Let me know how that feels. <laughs> Is it turning on for you? So you can see we're in that abduction. And let it come down, let it relax. Take some circles. So that was our clam. And now we're gonna keep working with this right leg, but we're gonna roll over onto our front side. And a suggestion I might have, especially if you're a person that many are that experiences low back pain, is to take that blanket and you're gonna put it right across the front of your pelvis so that the bottom edge of the blanket is right on your hip creases. And what that'll do is it'll encourage your low back to stay longer because one of the things I work on when I'm doing the gluteal muscles is to guide, try to get them firing without getting the low back all cranky. So can you keep the low back muscles more relaxed? And then you're gonna come down and you can take your right arm to your side. You're gonna take, I'm gonna be turning away from you, but you're going to eventually turn your, onto your left, or excuse me, right cheek, your right cheek. But for now, you can rest on your right cheek. Feel yourself from your right toes all the way up to the hip. Reach your big right toe away from you, so lengthen it. Feel your inner right thigh, and on an inhalation, lift the leg up as high as you can go. Notice, so now you'll be getting hamstrings and your big glutes. And as you exhale, let it come back down. So you can inhale, lift it up as high as it'll go. And exhale, take it down. So oftentimes, because I've watched this one in students over and over, that we don't know it, but the knee's bending. And we're really just lifting the low leg. So think of lifting from your thigh or even your, the front of your hip crease. Try to get the front of the hip crease up. So the reason that we're working with one leg is as important as it is to get the glutes to fire, you also don't want them to be cranky and firing all the time. So as you're doing the right leg, can the left butt cheek stay relaxed? Check that. You might even take the right one up, hold it for a few breaths, try to relax the left, and then let it come down, shake it out. Now we'll make it more functional by adding the upper body because the way our brain um, recruits muscles is from the left shoulder to the right hip. So you're going to place your right cheek or maybe your temple on that left hand. Relax your right shoulder and visualize your left shoulder and right buttocks. Take a breath in and as you breathe in, lift your arm, your head and your leg. And as you exhale, come down. So try to think of engaging by the left shoulder blade and the right hip. And keeping the right shoulder and left hip area quiet. You might lift up and come down and release. Or you could lift up and take a hold for a few breaths, feeling it. Gives you the opportunity to relax the right shoulder, the left buttocks, relax the low back. So think about when we walk, because this was about functional mobility, right? When we walk, if the left hand comes forward, the right leg is back. So whichever arm is forward, the opposite leg is back. 
And these big glutes are responsible for propelling us forward. This would be our back leg, the right leg. One more breath if you're holding it. And then take a slow, complete release. Let it come down. You can shake it out. I can face you again. All right. So continuing with the right leg, I like to work with the glutes in different positions. So this was leg extended. We've done the bouncing. Now what we're going to do is bend your right knee. Try your best to place your right heel on top of the back of the knee so you've got 90 degrees. And just go ahead and push the front of the thigh into the ground. And notice if you get some glute contraction when you do that. So what can you feel by pushing the front of the thigh into the ground? Your hamstrings will come along for the ride because they like each other. They like to party together. And if you're getting that turn on, then push into the ground and on an inhalation, lift your heel up towards the sky. But think of lifting from the inner thigh. So what we don't want is the hip rotating outward. We want to keep the front of the right side of the pelvis on the ground or on the blanket. Lift inner thigh. Take it up. And slowly release it down. You can release it all the way down. Shake it out. Don't be afraid to touch your own butt muscle. See if it's turning on. Can you get just that right side? So we do these, what we say, asymmetrically, one side at a time, so that the left side's on holiday, strengthening the right side, turning it on, and equally important, letting it come down, shake it out, let it relax. Let's do one more like that. You can start that initiation by pushing in to the ground with the thighs. So we create force by pushing into or pulling away from the ground. So push in first and then pull away. How does that feel for your gluteal muscle? And you feel that tightening, that lifting, going for the bubble butt here. One more breath. And then slowly let it come down. Shake it out. All right, before we leave the right leg, I have one bonus round that I wasn't going to put in there, but I just like this one because for me it's a challenge, and um, so I'm putting it in there. So you're going to take your right foot to your inner left calf, not on the knee joint, but the calf. So notice the way that your, your arch of your foot will fit right into the calf like a puzzle, and then roll your left toes under. So you're going to engage your left leg. You're going to have to. You're going to want your arms somewhere at your sides. So we're almost in a tree pose, yeah? And then push your right foot into your inner left calf and your calf into your foot. And even that, you're going to start to feel some engagement, both sides. And then you can release that. So push foot into calf, calf into, th fat, calf into foot. You're creating resistance between the two. And see what you feel below your hips in that back line. And then if it feels okay, push them and see if you can lift your right inner knee off the ground. There's some glute strength. So remember that the glute max not only takes the leg back, but it also externally rotates. It can help with that. You might find that this one will help you to connect to more of your core muscles too. It's almost impossible to do this without pushing into your right arm. So recognizing that muscles don't work independently of one another, they work as a system. So taking that knee, you can lift it up for a few breaths. Engage. Hardest tree pose you've ever done. <laughs> and then take it down. Let it relax. Shake it out. Okay, so we're going to turn over onto our back and just take a short intermission from our glute firing program to feel. That's an important part of the somatics is to feel. So I want you to come onto your backside so you can feel at least the big glutes on the ground. Use the ground for feedback. Is there any difference in the way that your butt cheeks are resting on the ground or the way that your hips are? Is one higher or lower than the other? Or one leg feel longer or shorter? Just sensing left and right sides, the outer hips. Is there more awareness of one side than the other? 
And just feeling that. Being in that space of awareness without movement, there's still plenty to feel. And you can say thank you to your glutes and your right side for stabilizing your pelvis, for taking you wherever you want to go. And then we'll be switching sides. So take your time. We start out by coming onto our right side. I'm going to bring my little pillow with me. Whatever position your legs want to start in, we want to land first on the right side to where it's comfortable for you. Sometimes with the mic on, it's not as comfortable, so I have to move that over a little bit. So letting yourself relax onto your right side, just landing. I know you're already getting so excited. The left side's like, it's my turn. It's my turn, right? Yeah, you're feeling it. I know. We've got the mojo working. We're going to go right through that left side. So take a moment. And then you're going to extend your left leg. And then take it so the heel is in line with the hip. So as if you were standing on the leg. And lift the heel up to just about the height of the hip. Start there. And then take the toes and you might, well, let's keep them forward first and then begin to take the thigh back. So think of moving from your hip crease, not your waist. So if your belly comes forward and your upper hip, you want to draw those in and move from the hip crease down here, the low hinge, so that your low back stays long and you're really feeling more of the gluteal muscles and hamstrings, low back stays relaxed. And that can be problematic because when the gluteal muscles aren't firing right, the low back does more work than it needs to. It takes, it works over time. So you're just taking it back and then bring it forward and letting it relax. You can do that again, lift it up, take it back. And then if you want to get a little more sensation, turn the toes up towards the sky as you do that. See what that feels like and play. You could turn your toes all the way part way but toes up and thigh back. Touch that left cheek. Is it as accessible as the right one? Or maybe it's more accessible. It was trying to do all the work the first time. You're just noticing. Still smiling. And take it down. Let it relax. Let's do one more of those. Big glute. Take your leg back. Maybe you externally rotate a little bit. And notice I'm not lifting way up because as soon as I do that, I go into the little glutes. I'm keeping the leg low. I want to feel that the big one that I sit on on the left side. Can you feel that? Sometimes it helps to push into your heel and imagine plugging your thigh bone into your hip. And again, you might be feeling it in that outer hip, if only because the glute attaches. This is the one that attaches to the sacrum. So if you've got anything going on in your sacrum, you're going to feel it there perhaps. And then also to your IT band in the outer hip. But feeling the difference between the glute max and the IT band versus using the glute medius and minimus, that's kind of a trick. And then take that down, let it relax. Oh, yeah. You can do those hip circles or... Do your little, uh, I like to call it spooning or stirring your hip. And then let's take a look at the little glutes, medius and minimus. So think of the outer hip where they attach in the front of that. It's like a baseball glove, the hip, the hip mitt, the hip mitt that's in there. And then to your greater trochanter out here. And then if you want, we'll do a pulsation of the glute max. So lifting it up. You can externally rotate it. You can take it back and just pulsate it up and down or make little circles. I actually find the smaller movements create more sensation. And again, I'm trying not to lift it too high, but see if you can really get into that big back butt muscle. Just pulsating. Nice opportunity to stretch the front of the thigh to the front of the hip. Create some spaciousness if we sit a lot. These tend to get jammed up in the front of the hip crease there. 
And notice does one side feel stronger than the other? I know this is my strong side. This could do, the, do this all day. The other side was getting really cranky. And then we'll let it come down and relax. All right, and then if you wanna do those circles, stir your hip a little bit before we switch into our little glutes. So now visualize the outer hip coming into your greater trochanter. You're gonna lift the leg up, and this time you wanna internally rotate the foot a little bit, so thigh bone rolls in, toes towards the ground, and start to pulsate it, lifting. Think I like to think of lifting the outer heel towards the sky or even the outer hip towards the sky. Find it. So you'll notice if, if you're too far back, you're gonna go more into the big glutes, which is okay. They can have a party together, but you might even bring the leg slightly forward, see where you feel that. But the higher you go, foot towards the ceiling, the more sensation. <laughs> I also find the more I internally rotate then I'm really feeling them. You do you, pulsate for a little while, make sure you're breathing. And then slowly, slowly let it come all the way down. Release it completely. The other thing I'm checking is to make sure that the right side is not trying to help or vice versa. So can you really locate yourself in just one side, let the other side relax? Because oftentimes if we have muscles that aren't firing correctly, they're doing different things on the two sides. One might be sleeping all the time, the other one's overworked. So pulsating again, feeling that outer hip region. And let that come down and relax. Okay, so we're gonna roll onto our front side. And if you found it helped you last time to put the blanket underneath the front of the pelvis just to keep your low back long, long and encourage the strength, the stability to come from your glutes, not your low back, then please do that. Low back long, like the front of your hip creases are hanging right off the edge of that blanket. Come down to a place where you can rest. We're working with the right leg. So just, excuse me, the left leg. Feel your left leg, notice it. And reach your big toe away from your hip. And notice even just reaching, you might start to feel that engagement. You don't even have to lift. But then if it feels okay, reach and then lift up. Think of lifting from the inner thigh, the front of the hip crease. So no bend in the knee. As soon as we bend that knee, we, we still feel the glutes, but differently. We're going to do that one on, on with the dent, bent knee purposely, right? So lifting up a straight leg. You can lift it up on inhale. Let it come down on exhale. Lift straight up behind you. So taking the hip into extension, let it come down. See if the right side's quiet. And then to make it more functional, we'll add the upper body. So you could take your left hand down to your side. You might rest your uh, left cheek on your right hand. And before you lift up, just visualize the right shoulder blade area, the muscles, and the left hip and buttocks. So that's that cross body pattern that our brain actually will recruit muscles from right shoulder to left hip. And on a breath in, float the left leg, head and right elbow and shoulder up. Breathe out and come down. And just sensing, are you feeling that active engagement, right shoulder, left hip? Or is the right hip or left shoulder trying to jump in on the game? Ask them to relax. All you can do is ask, <laughs> offer yourself kindness. Do a couple lifting on inhale, releasing on exhale. You can also take it to your end point, lifting up, holding. And I find that when I do this, it gives me the opportunity to release the right butt cheek, left shoulder, and feel the connection. Imagine where that signal in your nervous system crosses through your spine from your right shoulder to your left hip. One more breath. Now let that come down, relax it, shake it out. They're waking up, right? Next one, anywhere you want your arms, you're gonna do the bent knee position. So bend the left knee, place the heel roughly over the back of the knee so you've got a 90 degree angle. 
It's hard to see yourself, but you can imagine that. And then start by just pushing the front of the thigh into the ground. And the one thing I watch is that when I push the front of the thigh, I'm also going to push the front of the hip crease so the hip crease doesn't pop up off the ground. You may even want to keep a hand underneath there. So push the thigh down. And are you recruiting the muscles by pushing into gravity? Can you feel that? And then you can push in, and as you inhale, lift up, pull away from gravity. There's work there too. Exhale, let it come down. You can let it come all the way down. Relax it. Playing footsies with the dog here. Push into the ground. Lift it up as high as you can go. Feel that left butt cheek, right side's quiet. Exhale, come down, release. The other thing I check here, too, is that my shoulders aren't getting in on the action. Can you isolate just that left big glute muscle? Everything else is relaxed. So if you tend to hold tension in your shoulders, the ability to be able to just do this glute muscle, and you might lift it up, hold it there for a few breaths, feel the shortening through the hamstrings, the tightening through the glutes, there's your bubble butt, but then relax your shoulders, your head, your neck. Relax your right butt cheek. Take a few breaths there. I like to also imagine hugging the inner thigh to the center or towards the right thigh. That gives you a little more juiciness. And then slowly let it come down. If you've been holding it, let it relax. Shake it out. Bonus round on the prone tree pose. That was a favorite, wasn't it? So you're going to take your left foot somewhere into your inner right calf. So this is my grumpy side that my sacrum gets uh, not so pleased. So I'm going to be a little more cautious with this side. But start by just pushing the foot into the calf and the calf into the foot. And you're going to roll your right toes under. You want to keep that right leg slightly engaged now too. It has to be. And then release that. And just see what you feel when you push push foot into calf and resist with the calf. And sometimes you don't even have to lift the knee. You're getting that engagement. Okay, you're feeling that in your glutes all the way around. And then if you want to add to that, you can push, engage, and then lift the left knee up off the ground. So I know for me, I can lift a lot higher on the other side because this is my grumpy side. But also notice how the muscles come online in the side body. You're not probably not asking yourself to push the left arm into the ground, but it's happening. <laughs> so making it uh, more of a, a core work to push the foot in, lift it up, let it come down, or you can even hold it there for a few breaths. Feel the difference between strengthening and straining. And my definition is you're still breathing. <laughs> Take it down. Let it relax. Shake it out. And we're going to roll over on to our backside. And as much as I fully appreciate the ability to fire the gluteal muscles, and if you're going for your walk, go for it. It's equally important, as you may have noticed, to relax them. So we're going to finish with a little relaxation. Coming down onto the backside. Once you're on your back, we'll start with the left leg. So you're going to cross the left leg on top of the right, like you're just sitting in a chair. And your right foot's about at the center of your spine, so you can walk that into center. Take your arms out to your sides just to help you stabilize. And then think of your legs going to the right, but really, really slowly. So like go slow-mo. You're going to start to tip onto the right pinky toe side of the foot. You're going to feel the weight of the left leg and the right leg carrying yourself over, but go really, really slow. And as you do that, you're going to feel that stretch through your outer hip, through the buttocks. Go as far as you can. And then equally as slow, come back. Use those muscles to bring you back. And the first time you may not go all the way to your end point. We'll do this two more times. Feel your foot. Start to tip onto the pinky toe side of the right foot. Let the left leg just take a ride. Slowly falling. Little by little, you get a nice stretch of your side body, your waist, your rib cage. 
and then a slow lift up. Check to see your shoulders, your head, your neck is relaxed, your jaw. And last time, third time is a charm, slowly letting the legs fall into gravity, but you're in control. And then this last time, you might feel your left foot hit the floor, maybe even your right knee. You can stay there or get a little more stretch to the side by reaching your left arm overhead. And feel that outer left hip. Say thank you to your little glutes for joining the party. A few breaths into that area, maybe even into your left lung, lengthening and releasing. Slide your hand down and come back to your center position. Before you uncross legs, just draw them in. And here's another little way to stretch. Draw them in, still crossed. Oh, there you go, right into the glute. Draw those legs in. You can rock a little bit. Get right into the back of the left buttocks, outer thigh. And then we'll uncross and we'll switch sides. So walk your left leg more to the center of your mat or straight off your tailbone where now you know your gluteus max maximus attaches to, right? Did you know that in your sacrum? And then cross. If you've ever had sacrum pain, you know that your gluteus maximus attaches to your sacrum. That's how we find things out, right? Dr. Google. So now you're gonna let that leg fall, both legs, slowly. You can take your arms out to the side, slowly, slowly to the left. And this is a nice way also to note for yourself is one side having a hard time relaxing? Is it easier to fall and let go in one side than the other? And then slowly take the legs back up. Feel when you're flat on your left foot again and pause. We'll do it two more times. Let the right leg just be carried on the left leg, letting it fall. Feel that outer right hip stretch Go as far as you can comfortably onto the pinky toe side of the left foot. Come back up. And one more time. And this time land. Land wherever you can remain comfortably for a few breaths. Go really slow into it. Feel the stretch through your waist, through that outer right hip. And just letting the pinky toe side of the left foot fall to the ground. Gently taking the right leg down. If you want to add the right arm reaching overhead, you can do that. Feel that nice stretch through the outer hip, the buttocks. Mm, take a few breaths into your right lung. So connect your gluteal muscles on your right side to your torso. Let that whole right side of your torso release and relax. You want to be long and tall before you go for your walk. And when you're ready, slowly take the legs back up. Keeping them crossed, I'll invite you to draw the thighs towards you. Maybe you let your tailbone lift up. There's a nice opportunity to really stretch out the back line of the right buttocks and hip. You can be still or just a little bit of rocking or circles. This is one of my favorites that I do in bed in the morning to get rid of some of the stickiness. And then uncross that. The last one we'll do is more for the big glutes. And it's a very simple yoga pose, pose called Apanasana. It's also great for releasing your low back. So you can take your hands behind the thighs. Keep your tailbone long. So as you, you're going to use the strength of your arms, not your legs. As you draw your thighs towards you, and I like to do that on my exhale, think of pushing your tailbone down. So push the tailbone into the ground and draw the thighs towards you. You'll still have a little arch in your back. And then as you inhale, push the thighs away. So using the strength of the arms, exhale, keep the tailbone on the ground, draw the thighs towards you. So when we keep the tailbone on the ground, 
It'll be a little bit different stretch, then eventually we'll lift it up a little bit. But for now, keep that low back arched, draw the thighs in on exhalation. And you can play with the knees being close together, knees being wide apart. It'll give you a little bit different stretch in the apanasana. Take one more with the tail long. <clears throat> and then switch it up. Still using your arms. As you exhale, draw the thighs toward you and see if that tail wants to lift up and you'll feel more stretch through your low back all the way in the upper portion of the glutes. Inhale. Let the legs go away. Exhale, draw them in. Letting your tailbone curl away from the ground. It's like you're gently painting your low back, sacrum and tail on the ground and then lifting them up. Or think of a piece of tape. You're sticking that tape down from your sacrum to your tail and then slowly pulling that piece of tape up using your arm strength. Nice low back release. Last one, finish it off and then take a position where your glutes, your legs, your thighs, everything's happy. You can shake out your legs a little bit <clears throat> and just be present in the space of your pelvis and recognizing that the glutes, they don't, they don't act alone. It's a gluteal party to help you go forward in life, but they work with many other muscles, recognizing the bones, your big strong femur bones, your hip bones. Maybe next time you do go for a walk, considering the stability and the mobility <clears throat> that your gluteal muscles are giving you. Feel free to take a few breaths to your abdomen. Inhaling, feeling the softness of the belly rise. Exhale, let everything settle, including the muscles in the buttocks. You're welcome to stay here for as long as you'd like. When you're ready to come up, a full body stretch, rolling to one side. <clears throat> Thanks for joining me and learning to fire your glutes. I hope it was helpful and functional. And by functional, I mean that these are muscles that you can use to help to do things that bring you joy in your body, your heart, and your mind. Peace, joy, love, and light.